Hey guys, so what I thought I'd do today is just show you a quick video um, of this uh, Sega Saturn here that I've recently modified. Um, I've got three modifications in there. I've got a um, mod chip in there. I've got Seb's um, switchless mod in there to switch between region and uh, uh, refresh rate for the monitor. And I've also got a dual BIOS in there which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I've got three games here, all on CDR, um, from Asda, as you can see. Um, got Shinobi X, which is PAL, um, Gradius Deluxe Pack, Deluxe Pack, which is Japanese, and Daytona CCE, which is um, American. So what I'll just do is I'll pop the uh, British game in there first. Just pop it in, close the old lid, just give it a reset. And as you see, it just boots up as per normal. It goes into the game. Now Seb's mod is necessary for um, when you're playing backups because the mod chip for the Sega Saturn doesn't actually uh, allow you to play different region games. Um, so what his mod does is it basically, if you've probably all heard of this, the switches where you can switch between Japanese, American, all that. It just has a little uh, microcontroller doing that uh, for you, which you can just then use the reset button to switch your regions and all the rest of it, which is really nice and clean, and you don't have to chop up the casing at all. It's much more convenient as well. Um, and you've just got a little LED indicator here. Um, it's green at the moment because it's in European mode. Uh, if that's orange, then you're in uh, American mode, and if it's uh, red, then you're in Japanese mode. So what I'll just do quickly, I'll open that up, put this to one side, and I'll just pop in Daytona CCE, which is the American or NTSC region game. Give that a reset. Give it just a moment. So it'll boot up as normal, however, it won't play it. So, what I do, I hold down the reset button, and the little LED changes colours there, and I want to leave it on orange, then the console resets itself, and now it behaves as an American console would and it boots the game no problem. Um, now the thing that I've done just to slightly modify Seb's uh, Switches mod is I've, uh, like I say, I've got the the dual BIOS in there <clears throat> and instead of telling you all about that, I'll show you all about it now. Just load that up, open that up rather. I'll pop in Gradius Deluxe Pack and I'll hold the button down until it turns red and then release and behold and there you go so it's now playing the Japanese Sega Saturn game Gradius co uh, Collection? Gradius Deluxe Pack, sorry um, and yeah, if you notice there, the uh, Japanese BIOS came up, which is pretty cool. Um, basically all I did there was take a 27C800 EP ROM and put uh, both the English language version of the BIOS on there and the Japanese language version of the BIOS on there. Um, and I used the heart, heart, topmost address line to switch between the both, giving it either 5 volts or ground based on what the uh, SEBS uh, mod is outputting at the time. Um, now the first time I did this I got it the wrong way around and I had the Japanese BIOS for all the uh, English English language uh, oh, bloody games and then um, yeah basically the English BIOS was on the Japanese side but um, the way I got around that is um, use, just use a different pin of Seb's um, pick chip which holds his uh, switchless mod on it and then it gave me the right output but yeah it depends on which order you 
compile the um, BIOSes on the chip. Uh, I think I think I've got the uh, Japanese BIOS in there below the American BIOS. Anyway, I'll put a link down here to um, illustrate what I've done as best I can. Um, so if you've got any questions, just leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I may open this up so you can have a look at what I've done, but oh god. <laughs> it's a mess of wires in there, because this is the uh, Model 2 Saturn, and the BIOS for this one is actually, it's a, a surface mount SOP IC, and it's really small, and it's like soldered directly to the motherboard. And oh, I mean, I've got a, a reflow station, so it wasn't hard to remove it. But I had to wire the 42, 41 wires, sorry, individually to the bloody motherboard, which wasn't fun. It took about two hours, but hey, I think it's kind of cool. Let's check out that BIOS again. I'll take the disc out so you can see the... That, yeah. And I'll sw switch it again to... Let's go for the UK BIOS, I guess. Oops. So, completely un unnecessary feature, but I don't know, I think it's kind of, kind of cool. I like things to be kind of as original as they can, so it wasn't hard to do. It didn't cost me anything because I had the EPROM lying around. And I had some pick chips from a different project lying around as well. So, it's kind of kind of an interesting little mod to do. Plus, this is all stock. There's no holes or switch, switches anywhere on there. It just uses the reset button um, as normal. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you guys. And like I say, I put uh, the instructions of what you need to do in the uh, description box below. Put a link to Seb's website. And I'll put a link to uh, Rob Webb's website as well, uh, consolegoods.co.uk, where I got the mod chip. Um, ridiculously cheap it's gone for like 12 quid delivered or something at the moment so if you want need a mod chip for your satin grab one from him he's a really good guy and probably the cheapest around but yeah i guess that's about it for now uh, so i'll see you later